Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to Relevant and Reformed after quite a hiatus. Uh, I am Pastor Rich Kukin, you may recall, and obviously this is not Nick Costanzo. Uh, this is Brother Don Barry. Don, so good to have you with us today, and thank you for your time and, and being here with us. Uh, Don is a, a professing member of our Pocono Reformed Bible Church, and we have become very good friends. And as I have gotten to know him, I said, you, I said to myself, you all need to get to know him and hear his testimony and the way the Lord has worked in his life. Uh, and by the way, Nick Costanzo is finishing up his first year of studies at Reformed Theological Seminary, as many of you know. He and his dear wife, Jessica, have just had a fourth precious child, Gabriella Grace, and they are doing well, and we hope to be able to see them this summer. But Don, for today, um, I'd like you to take your, your word there. I know you love the word, and I'm going to turn with you to Psalm 139 to begin. Psalm 139. And as we're turning, uh, dear friends, this is going to be what I, I, I believe will be a three-part uh, series of Relevant and Reformed, which I'm calling Relevant and Reformed in black and white, okay? So if you have a Bible handy and would care to turn, we'll go to Psalm 139. If you want to just listen, that's fine. And I'll be reading about the first 18 verses. Psalm 139, a Psalm of David. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in, behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. And when I awake... I am still with you. Well, Brother Don, that psalm obviously speaks of the Lord's providential care, watching over us through the course of our lives, even in our mother's womb. Uh, we've had kind of different upbringings, you and I. Um, yeah. I grew up in uh, northern New Jersey, suburban area. Uh, in fact, my grandfather had a 40-acre truck farm of vegetables, and he'd wow. load the truck up and bring it down to the Patterson Market early every morning. Uh, I could ride my bike around the neighborhood, and I, I just saw uh, Wayne Township be built up uh, from pretty rural uh, community uh, to more of a suburbia. But you didn't grow up in North Jersey uh, suburbia. No. Uh, <laughs> so tell the brothers and sisters where you grow up. I suppose you were born at a very early age. And uh, <laughs> tell us about your, your upbringing. Um, I was born 1978 uh, in Queens, New York. Okay. Queensbridge Housing Projects. Grew up in the projects, you know, pretty rough area. Yeah. Um, even though it was rough, uh, it, we still had. Uh, it's it still there were still some great times. Also, okay, it wasn't, it wasn't all bad actually. Okay, and Don, didn't you tell me that the particular project you were in, it had like the the most dense population per square mile or something in in uh, New York City? Yes, yes, it's the the biggest housing projects in the, I think in the the country or the world. Oh man, ninety six ninety six buildings. Uh, six blocks called Queensbridge Housing Projects. Okay, okay. In Queens, New York. Okay. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, pretty big area, a lot of people. Okay. Uh, you know, yeah. You know, you told me that as you were growing up, um, your mom wanted you to believe in Santa Claus. And you said you had a problem with believing that. Uh, can you tell our friends why? Um, you know, when I was real young, I believed, but then as I got like six or seven, then I, I had a lot of questions from my mom's, uh, you know, uh, my mother. I was like, hey, mom, uh, how could Santa Claus come in when we got gates on the windows? <laughs> I said, like, does Santa Claus have a, 
Key to the front door downstairs. The door's <laughs> locked. How's he gonna get in and bring us our gifts? Right. And the right. windows are locked. Now, how right. are you gonna get to the window? Right. So, I was, you know, I had many questions. And, right. You know, my mother, she was like, well, he's just gonna come. You okay. Know? <laughs> okay. And, now, was your dad on the scene at that point as you were growing up six, seven, eight years old? Uh, actually, my mother broke up with my father before I was born. She broke up no with kidding. him. No kidding. Yeah. So she broke up with him before I was born. Okay. But, you know, I, I, had, I had interactions with him. Okay. You know, okay. but not too often. All like right. Once in a while, you come around. All right. Know. Some relations, some interaction. Some relations, said. but not really totally. Relations. But now, yeah. Don, without, you said it was kind of a tough neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. Um, And you didn't have a father to protect you, Um, yet you'd go out in the streets. Like, did you ever come across gangs or anything like that? Um, There was no gangs in the early 80s. You just had, like, uh, like drug crews. Okay. You know, guys that, they from the same block, the same building, and they sell drugs together. Okay. You know, every, every block I had... Every block in my I mean, excuse me. Every block in my neighborhood had yeah. different crews. Okay. And you had one crew on this side, one crew on that side, wow. and sometimes they used to bump heads with each other. Okay. Because okay. you know it was over the the, uh, the drug territory. Okay. It was about it was, it was really mostly about money. You know. Is that right? That's the drugs are about the money. Yeah, it was okay. like the, the, the the wars were about money. Like it'd be a guy from the other side, he would come on my, like my side, or some guy right. on my side will sell drugs. Right. And and, hey, and guys would confront each other. Hey. You don't belong in this territory. You need to go on your side and do what they you have turfs. to do. They had turfs. Yeah, it was like a turf war okay, oh, oh, okay. When, the, when the drama happened mostly. Okay. Now, did they ever try to lure you into one of the gangs, or were you ever tempted to join a gang, or how did your mom kind of you know keep watch over you as a young boy growing oh, up in that kind it, of environment? It, it, it was like, it wasn't really gangs. It was like, you know, sometimes... It, you know, older older guys would recruit younger guy, younger kids to sell drugs. Okay, okay. You know, I had I had, I had a situation where I was going to my mother's friend house to bring her something. Some guys they tried to kind of recruit me. Okay, they asked where I was coming from. I said I'm coming from school. Yeah. And one guy said, "Hey," uh, he said, "Man, you wasting your time." <laughs> and I looked at him like, "Okay, yeah, all right." And then I just kept I kept I kept it moving. Right. <laughs> you know, I right. didn't even I said, "You know what." They talking foolishness, man. Let me get going. So okay. okay. I didn't get a chance from him. He probably wanted to recruit me, you know, but I didn't give him a chance. Okay, good moving, for you. I'm moving hastily. Okay, okay. And speaking of moving hastily, didn't you tell me you would walk, like, for miles? I mean, can you give our, our friends, listening friends, a sense of where you would walk from and to if they are all, all familiar with New York City? Uh, I would walk from Queens to Manhattan. Which is a five from my neighborhood, five miles. Okay, I used to walk. When I was younger, I used to walk. I started when I was younger. I, my friend we used to walk to Manhattan for Queens, which is like four or five, like three or four miles. <laughs> okay, and I'll convince my friend. I have a I have a way of convincing people uh, to make it seem like it's not that far. Okay. I had a friend of mine named Scott. I'm like, hey Scott, man, walk me to Manhattan real quick. Right, like like is up the block. Right, and he would agree. Okay. Yeah, okay. Go. Come on. We just walk in, and it's hot, like ninety degrees. Oh wow. You know, I'm getting a tan. Right. You know, uh, and then when I, later on, I just start, uh, I start walking to work sometimes. Okay. Walk home from work at okay. twelve midnight. Okay. Uh, where were some, where were some places that you worked in the city? Um, I I I worked at the Harvard Club. I don't know if you know if, Harvard Club is a club started by I guess Har- Harvard grads. Yeah. And. You know, they would, uh, it was a fancy club. Okay. So I did security there. Okay. Okay. You know, I, I, and I worked security in the shelter in the Bronx. Now, now, over the years, and by the way, tell our friends uh, what you're doing now, actually, uh, where you work now and, and what you do now. Uh, I work downtown Manhattan at the NYU residential building. I do doorman work. Right, right. And uh, you you told me, I guess it was a couple years ago, during 2020 or so, there were even some uh, Black Lives Matters, uh, I don't know if they're riots, but protests marching past your building and everything. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And what was what was that all about? And how did you you know relate to that or respond to that? Um, it was so basically they had, they had a pro they had the protest during the right. daytime. They had the protest. The the uh, mostly young t- different ages, but okay. a lot of young twenties. Okay. And young probably teenagers too. Okay. They would walk past the building and they would protest. Okay. Yelling obscenities. Really. Really. Yeah. At mm-hmm. you or just about no, everything? Nah, and, yeah. just at the police. Okay. Uh, making the der- derogatory terms toward the police. Okay. And what did you think about that? I thought it was totally in- inerrant. I yeah. thought it was wrong, yeah. you know? Yeah. But it was, the whole uh, movement is totally wrong. Okay. And it's unbiblical and scripture and it's, it's basically evil. Yeah, yeah. It's roots. It, it is. It, I think it basically it's, very it's a communist. It's evil. It is evil. It's yeah. communist. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
communist Marxism. Yeah. It's totally wrong what they yeah. were doing, you yeah. know, totally evil what yeah. they were doing, you know. And then at nighttime, they would riot. Oh, gee. Wow. So basically, they would protest during the daytime. Okay. And then riot during the, de- during the uh, afternoon time. And, and that's right where you were. Right where I was at. And actually, I got caught but on my way to work. I got caught up in the uh, protest, man. <laughs> I, I'm driving, trying to get to work. And these these jokers, yeah. you know, they're cutting the street off. Okay. So, you know, I'm, you know, I'm beating my horn. Like, hey, God, you know, and, and you, the street. But you were in the middle of all I that. I was in the middle. I got caught in the middle oh. of the protest. Okay. I was like, I was like, wow. Okay. And I'm boot beat my horn. And, they yeah. just, and then I just... You know, uh, so to me to get it took me like twenty minutes, thirty minutes to get out of it. So then eventually I just eased, I eased up the you know the, okay. the, the New York way. Right, right, right. I saw people in New York. We eased <laughs> up. You know, <laughs> right. and, just keep going, keep, keep it moving, just keep going. Okay. Say, you know? Now, Don, as you think back then to your your boyhood, your childhood, teens, and then even through something like that, um, how would you describe God's care for you? I hope in a, in the next podcast of Relevant Reformed. To, to get into more spiritually how the Lord claimed you and how you came to faith yeah. and ultimately even to the Reformed faith and to Pocono Reformed Bible Church. Uh, but but just as you look back over your life, like I said, so different from mine in northern New Jersey. Um, did you see a time or times where you really felt the Lord had his hand on you, protecting you? In fact, not just recently, I mean, with all respect, you could have been killed on the highway. Yes. Uh, okay, and, and, and use that as an example. But times you really felt the Lord's hand as per... Psalm 139 was watching over you and caring for you. There's a couple of times, actually, I got killed in the highway. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I know when I was a kid, you know, the situation happened. Me and my mother, we, we were walking. Cause my mother went to, she used to go to church in Jamaica, Queens. Okay. Uh, and she would bring you to church? Yeah, she brought me to church as a kid. Okay. So, uh, we were at all night prayer one Friday night into Saturday. And uh, we were coming home like 2 or 3 in the morning. And I remember seeing guys from behind us running in our direction. Okay. And I seen guys running toward our direction from another side. Okay. And you were in the middle. I, me and my mother was in the middle. Okay. And we walking through, and technically, and uh, so got, the guy runs up and, pu- and points, pull out a gun, and he aimed at my at my mother's direction in our direction. Like basically, my mother's face, kind of. Come on. And uh, my mother, she said. Uh, you better not shoot. And then we walked inside the building. Yeah. It so, was that close. Mm-hmm. It was. Yes. And how old were you at that time about, uh, would you say? I know I was at least, got to be four to five. Oh, you were that young? Four or five, five to oldest. But, but you least, remember that. Yeah, I remember, I remember, I remember that. Wow. Yeah, I remember wow. that. Yeah. Okay. So he, she said, she said, she said uh, you better not shoot. And then we walked in the building. Oh, my goodness. And thank God that was the end of it. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I, I was thinking, like, because when I was a little kid, I used to have a lot of cap guns, you know? Okay. We, uh, when I was a kid, they had, they had, uh, the cap guns look real. Right. That's why a lot of kids, you get, some kids would get shot by police because right. they had a 38. Yeah, it looked like a real gun. It looked like a real gun. Yeah. And so, yeah. and I knew that guns were guns do. And watch wow. the TV, and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. uh, you got a gun. Yeah. And my mother said, and we, she said, better not shoot. We walked in the building, and that was the end of it. Oh, and my goodness. Oh, my goodness. That was one way I believe that God uh, probably, you know, protected okay. me in a, in, a, in a sense. And protected you and your mom. Yeah. Now, speeding it up to these recent episodes, Don, if you don't mind sharing with the brothers and sisters again, um, and I think we prayed it for in the uh, in the sharing time at church one day, just your um, your protection on the highway. You do a lot of commuting now. Yeah, we'll get to that driving. in our next yeah. podcast, hopefully. But but tell about a time where you know what happened on the highway and how how the Lord protected you there. Oh uh, yeah, uh, yes. Uh, I'm driving. I'm in the slow lane. Thank the Lord. And my tire came off. It went literally flying, came off. Literally flying a car. It bounced on the other side of the highway. It didn't hit nobody else's car on the other side, and then it went down a. <laughs> But it, I did hit my car, but you know, me and the guy, we we uh, he took my information, but yeah. he decided not to take the insurance. Okay. It was like a scratch. Okay. So I okay. had to give him. I, I coughed up a little. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I kind of wish the insurance was says because I didn't like coughing up that five hundred. But <laughs> I, I think you, you told me it was a BMW. That yeah, you, BMW. You scratched the BMW. Oh, uh, was it BMW? <laughs> Yes, it was BMW. I'm sorry. Yes, it was not BMW. And that guy wanted the money. You don't want, let's not call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I gave him, I coughed up to 500 because it was my fault. So okay. I said, well, you, you know, can help with your tire. Yeah. But, but I said, but, you know what? The money, I, I, was, I wasn't happy about the money. You know, nobody want to give, nobody want to give up money unnecessarily. But right. 
I said, you know what? My life is more important than money. Amen. So I said, I'll take Amen. that. Well, Amen. we were, we were glad the Lord spared you, not yeah, only in the early me. years, but but more recently. And, yeah. and Don, speaking of that, let's turn in the Word to uh, Matthew chapter ten, where it talks about His providential care over us. And if you don't mind, I'm going to ask you to read some verses there. Matthew. And uh, for our brothers and sisters. When Don reads in our adult Sunday school, he always gives a disclaimer that he's reading from the King James. And so, so just you know, get ready. Uh, but, but drop down. Um, Matthew 10, right? Yeah, Matthew 10. And I want to find the verses, Don. I didn't have them written down. But it's where um, Jesus talks about just his watchful care. Okay, let's pick it up in, um, in fact, I'm going to have you include something else. Um, pick it up, Don, in verse 28 speaking of some of the dangers in life. And if you don't mind reading for us, and again, if our friends want to turn, Matthew 10, and read for us, please, uh, verses 28 through 31. Okay, Matthew 10, uh, 28 through 31. And if our friends want to just listen, that's fine. Thank you, Don. Okay. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Amen. Amen. Don, that's so beautiful. The NIV says, so don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. And the Lord has watched over you through this course of your life. Uh, in fact, how old? You have a birthday coming up, I think, Saturday? Yes, Okay, correct. how old are you going to be? Low 45. 45? Okay, yes. he's watched over me. How old am I? Uh, 67 years, I think. And these are the promises he gives to all of our listeners who truly believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. He, he, he's our Heavenly Father. Uh, he's our loving God. He's our providential caretaker. And as the scriptures tell us, not a hair can fall from our head without his will. And so we praise him for the care he's given you through all these years, that he's given me, that he's given our, our dear uh, listening, watching friends. And, um, and that's from the physical perspective mainly, as we've been saying. Yes. Now, Lord willing, um, our second podcast of Relevant and Reformed in Black and White is going to be done talking about uh, b briefly how the Lord worked in my life spiritually, but more importantly, how he's worked in yours. And so we thank everybody for listening, and uh, we invite you back to our next podcast of Relevant and Reformed. Take care, and God bless you all.